Now, let's get started. We're going to start with a review. This is 205. This is not new stuff. This is 205. You've been here. I put a spring on that support, and I take a 500 gram mass, half a kilogram. Now, without the mass, the bottom of that spring is right about 10 centimeters on this scale. When I put this mass on here, it stretches the spring. <coughs> now the bottom of the spring is right at, uh, it's about 22 centimeters. So it stretches at 12 centimeters. So that means that the mass is 500 grams. Remember when we have grams, we always put that in kilograms. And the uh, stretch, we call that delta S, okay? That delta S is 12 centimeters, but remember, we always have to convert everything to meters, so that's gonna be 0.12 meters. Now, folks, again, this is 205. What's the spring constant of that spring? This is not new stuff, old stuff. With your neighbor. You just met your neighbor. Talk to them. <laughs> okay, time to rat out your neighbor. How many of you are sitting next to someone who forgot over the holidays? Yeah, okay. Remember, we had this little thing called... Oh, what we're going to do is we're going to put that mass on. We're going to let it stretch to a new equilibrium position. There's the stretch, delta S. We're going to use something called Hook's Law. Remember? Hook, 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 hook. And Hooke just tells us, Robert Hooke just tells us that the force exerted by a spring is proportional to how much you stretch the spring. You stretch it twice as far, it pulls back twice as hard. And the constant of proportionality is that spring constant K. Now there's that minus sign there that talks about direction. If you displace the spring down, the spring pulls up. Those are in opposite directions. But we typically ignore that minus sign because it really just, I mean, it, it tells you something obvious and it confuses when you try to use it to get answers. So usually we're just going to ignore that minus sign and use our gut to get directions. Now, let's uh, use that to solve this problem. I have this spring, it's that long. When I put a mass on it, it stretches out. Let's call that the block. And it stretches that spring by an amount delta S. And it has mass M. Now, if I draw a free body diagram for that block, oh, a free body diagram. That is so 205. Yeah. It turns out we're going to be doing free body diagrams over and over and over again in 207. There's going to be so much of 205 that's just going to be useful in 207. You're going to wish you paid attention. Okay? Now, the first force we put on any free body diagram is the gravitational force, the weight, the earth pulling on the block, and remember, that's just the mass times the gravitational field strength. That's going to be half a kilogram, and the field strength is 9.8, let's call it 10 newtons for each kilogram. And that's going to give me 5 uh, newtons, sorry, misspelled N. I then ask, are there any magnets in this problem? No. So what touches the block? The spring. Does it push or does it pull? Yeah, that's the thing about springs. 
Sometimes they're pushing and sometimes they're pulling. When they're stretched, they pull. When they're compressed, they push. And so rather than switch back and forth between normal and tension, we're just going to label these as a capital F by the spring. And I know that if that block's just sitting there with no acceleration, that the net force must be zero. So that means that this has to also be five newtons. Remember, this is the most important uh, equation that we had in 205. And the way we read it is a net force causes a mass to accelerate. Okay? Now, if I go up here to Hooke's Law, and I plug in 5 newtons, and I plug in 0.12 meters, and I forget about the minus sign because that just gives me direction. I'm just looking for the size of K. K is always going to be a positive number. Um, that's going to give me a K value of 5 newtons divided by 0.12 meters. And that's going to be 41 newtons per meter. Okay? 